Hey everyone, welcome back. So in our last video, we discussed and did the hands-on practice on AWS Redshift. So what we did, we did basically create the cluster on AWS console and uh, we basically inserted the data. Now, you don't generally use the AWS console to do a lot of your work, but it, it is easy to understand the UI and you know, just click the button. But when you are working with a large team and when your product grows and the company grows, you can't really use the AWS console to manage your resources because as you get the more user, you will have to add more users into your IAM. You will have to create some of the more Redshift cluster based on your data grows and you will have to create a lot of EC2 instances. Now creating is the easier part. Okay. But let's say if the user leaves or the, we don't need those kind of cluster or the EC2 machine. Then there are a lot of other things that are that are attached to those things such as VPC, security groups, some of the other things that might be attached. So we might have to remove all these things together and with the console it is quite difficult. So we have different ways using that we can basically interact with the AWS and that is basically called as infrastructure as the coding that is basically little bit about the DevOps. But remember as a data engineer, you might be working on a different thing. So sometimes you are working on the deployment side too, because you need to deploy the entire data architecture too. Okay. So we're going to be understanding that in this particular video. So let's get started. So infrastructure code. Okay. So we can, as, as I told you that we can easily create servers using UI. Okay. But as we get more and more user and a server, it gets really difficult to manage. So let's say, uh, to manage one server, it is quite easy to manage five servers. You can easily manage it. But let's say if you have hundred servers, okay, you might get this when the company grows, let's say Amazon is might be running like hundred to thousand servers just to serve its orders and all the customers. Okay. So it is really difficult as uh, it, the server sizes grows and the number of servers and the number of users grows. Okay. So what we can do, we can basically use the modern data engineering into this and called the concept and, and there is a concept called as infrastructure as a core. Okay. So this is basically you can automate, maintain, deploy, replicate and share your entire infrastructure using code. So this, this is kind of like a borderline between data engineering and the DevOps. Okay. So let's say if you create one kind of the code template. Okay. So you can basically share that code template. Let's say for the creating rich cluster. Okay. And we will be doing this particular thing, then infrastructure code using code. So you can basically share, share that particular code with someone else and he can also create the Redshift cluster or delete it. So you don't have to manage everything using UI. Okay. So let's look at different ways we can basically do these things. So number one way is using AWS CLI. Okay. So this is basically similar to bash script we use. So onto windows or onto the Mac OS, what you can do, you can go to CMD. You can just write CMD and open. So over here, now let it open. So, okay. So you can install the AWS CLI. Okay. Right now I don't have that, but what you can do, you can go to AWS and install the AWS CLI and you can directly ca pass the command such as AWS uh, EC2 describe instance. Okay. And you will be able to get all the information about the A AWS. Okay. So this is uh, we will look into our next video and for the example, now this is basically using AWS CLI. So you can pass some of the commands and directly do that. You can also do that from the console. They provide the CLI also over there. Now the second way is using SDKs. Okay. So you might know about the SDKs. It is called as a software development kit and AWS provides you using the multiple language. So let's say, uh, you don't know Python because we are doing most of the things out of Python, but let's say you don't know, you might know the PHP .NET, C++, Node.js, etc. Okay. So you can use those language and interact with the AWS also. So you don't, it so supports a lot of languages. So based on your language understanding and your expertise, you can use languages and interact with the AWS and create the entire, uh, infrastructure. So this is basically called as uh, using the language using the SDK. Okay. So we're going to be using Python in our tutorial. So as we've been doing everything on the Python, so we will be using the Python. Now the third way is using the cloud formation. Okay. So this is the services. This is the particular service provided by AWS. Okay. So in this, you have the JSON description. Okay. So you provide everything over here. So in this example, as you can see, we have like 
provided uh, auto scaling this, this is one of the services of the uh, aws that you can easily scale your ec2 machine so you can provide the uh, all these thing configuration inside the json file and that you can use that particular json file to create the infrastructure and delete it so the cloud formation is completed towards the devops side so we don't we won't be jumping into this particular thing but if you want i can create the future videos on devops series and do these things okay so we will be creating our redshift cluster using code so using python code we will be first create the redshift cluster then we will create some of the tables insert data and then if you remember we can use copy command to insert data from s3 bucket to redshift so we will be doing that too so see you in the next video thank you